Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Today I have a technique that I'm going to share with you. We're going to do a little shadow stamping and I don't think I have done this in a very long time. So I'm pulling out a brand new suite of products and I'll show you all of that. We'll talk a little bit about it and I'll show you how to shadow stamp, which is a very cool technique. Let's turn this camera around and get started. We are going to be using the gorgeous Perennial Lavender suite of products. Now, this particular suite comes with two bundles. We have the Perennial Postage Bundle that has all these beautiful sentiments in it and all of these fantastic postage stamp type dies. This suite also includes the Painted Lavender, which is a bunch of beautiful floral images with some butterflies, some stems, and then a set of dies that match these, and then some dies that aren't even in the stamp set for some beautiful accents. This can be found on page 22, 23, whoops, 24, and 25 in our new April, January through April mini catalog. If you don't have one of these catalogs, we also have celebration going on right now. So if you need the new mini catalog and the celebration brochure, please reach out to me. I am happy to send those to you. Pop me an email. Here's my blog address. You can find my email on there. It's kelly at a stamp I would be happy to mail those to you. Let me pick up my take your pick tool that I just lost on the floor here. I'm also going to be using just a tiny little sliver of this perennial lavender designer series paper. This is absolutely gorgeous. All these purples, we've got a few reds, a wine color in there with the Blackberry Bliss, some blues, and of course some really, really rich greens. My card today is going to use Old Olive Ink, Crumb Cake Ink, and Gorgeous Grape. I'm gonna be throwing in a little bit of linen thread these beautiful purple fine shimmer gems. These are just, uh, they go with the suite perfectly. Hang on, let me get these back in here. I like to keep them safe inside the cellophane. I cut the edge off the cellophane so I can pull them in and out easily, but they're still protected inside the plastic. The Painted Posies Embossing Folder is a folder that is actually in our annual catalog. It's been around for a while, but I thought this would be a perfect embossing folder. These images would work perfect with the card that I'm going to make. This is my technique for my online technique club, the shadow stamping. So not only am I gonna show you how to make the card and do the technique, but I'll also show you the instruction sheet that comes with it and tell you a little bit about that club as soon as we get our card made. So I've got a scrap of basic white. I've also taken a piece of crumb cake and I've cut out the third largest postage die here. I've got a piece of Highland Heather, which is a beautiful coordinating color with this suite. The Highland Heather is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. Here's that little sliver of designer paper that I'm using. This is a half inch by five and a quarter. My card base is our basic white thick cardstock that's four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half. And then I have a basic white envelope to decorate here too. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna start this off by doing our technique right away. And I am going to pop open that gorgeous grape ink. I decided to use, whoops, let me get my stamps out here, this lavender image. So we're gonna stamp that up here. Now shadow stamping works best if you use it with a solid image versus a line art image. So this would be considered a solid image. And all you do for shadow stamping is ink it up in a fairly dark ink works the best. Stamp it 
and then pick it up and move it over just a tiny bit and stamp what would be considered a shadow. So that's what I've done here. So we've got our dark ink and it's just slightly offset with second generation ink. And now you've got two different colors here and it kind of looks like a shadow. That's what shadow stamping is. Super easy technique. Then I also thought it would be really fun to try this in a couple other colors. So let's go ahead and do that right away. I'm going to get out my chamois, here it is. This is called a Stampin' Chamois, and this is how I clean my stamps. You just rinse this out in water, and I like to keep it inside of a clear stamp case to keep it moist so it doesn't dry up on me while I'm stamping. I actually leave it in there all the time, and it will, um, it, it never gets smelly or moldy or anything like that, and it stays damp for a long time. So since I'm stamping pretty much every day, I really find that helpful. So I've got Berry Burst ink here, and I just wanted to share with you what that would look like. I'm going to stamp that, and then I'm going to offset it to get that shadow effect. And you can see how pretty that is. I like that color. And let's try one more with some Calypso Coral. I thought that would be stunning. And we're gonna ink that up. Let me make sure I get that inked up really good. I'm gonna stamp that full strength and then I'm going to pick it up and move it over just a little bit to get that shadow effect. So you can see that any type of a dark rich color is probably gonna work best for shadow stamping. But how pretty is that, right? Okay, let's continue making our card. So we've got this stamped. There's just a few other things that we need to add some um, stamping to. And I'm going to grab my crumb cake ink here. This is our crumb cake postage stamp. I wanted to do just a little tone on tone stamping on here. So I'm just gonna stamp this little image. It's like wild prairie wildflowers. And I just thought that would add, whoops, add a nice little element to our sentiment layer. Now I'm gonna come in with the sentiment that says, I can't thank you enough. We're gonna stamp that in gorgeous grape. And that's from the um, perennial postage stamp set. I'm gonna stamp that right here in the middle. And that turned out really good. The other things, the other elements I would like to stamp are these little butterflies. I thought these would make a nice accent on our card. So I've got those tiny little butterflies there. And then we need a little old olive. Whoops, just stuck my finger in the ink. And we're gonna do the stems that we can die cut. Oops, let me make sure I get that stamped up good. We're gonna do the stem, so that turned out good. Last but not least, I need to stamp the inside of my card. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold that. I had this scored at five and a half, so it would fold nicely. Anytime you make a tall card like this, you do need to score it for sure. When it's a short card that opens like this, you don't really need to score it, but when it opens like this, you're gonna to wanna to score it to so it keeps it from cracking on the edges. Okay, that little piece of designer series paper, here it is, that little lavender piece, I'm gonna put that right over here. So I'm gonna lay that right inside my card so I can figure out placement for my inside sentiment. And the inside, whoops, the inside says, you're simply marvelous. And what a great sentiment to send to somebody. Everybody wants to hear they're marvelous, right? So I'm just gonna stamp that right there with Gorgeous Grape ink, and I think we're done with our stamping. We need to do a little embossing and die cutting, and we will be able to put this card together. Oops, one more, one more thing. Gosh, we don't wanna forget our envelope, you guys. Envelopes are important. I think it's really important to have something pretty 
to see when you open up your mailbox. And since we have all the tools to make really pretty things, I don't know why we don't do that all the time. Every once in a while, I'll make a card and I won't have an envelope to match. And if it's the difference between sending out the card right now or not getting to sending out the card, you always want to send out the card. So if you have to send it out with a naked envelope, please do that. But for the majority of the time, I really like to stamp up an envelope while I have all my supplies out so that when I need to send it, it is ready to roll. And isn't that pretty? That's going to look beautiful in somebody's mailbox. I'm going to take this layer of Highland Heather. And again, that was three and three quarters by five and a quarter. By the way, you're going to find all the measurements and a complete product list for this project on my blog at www.estampabove.com. I'm going to run this through my machine. I am going to take the dies for these and I like to tape these down with a little temporary tape. Washi tape works fine too, just so that when they're going through my machine, they aren't moving on me. Otherwise, I have to stamp them over again. I'm sure we've all been there for that. And our butterflies, and there's even a die in here for the stems for our lavender. So I'm going to die cut that, emboss this, and I'll be right back. Okay, we have all of our elements here. They're die cut. I can't lose those little butterflies. And we're going to bring in our paper trimmer. This layer I'm going to cut into three pieces. So it's three and three quarters wide. I'm going to cut an inch off of each side. This is just going to make for an interesting layout on the front of my card. So we've got one inch off that side. We're going to do one inch off this side. And I'm going to keep those in order so we can put them back together, kind of like a puzzle. Here comes our middle panel, our left panel, and our right panel. And anytime I do panels like this, I like to do my outside pieces first because I can look at that outside margin and the side margin and get these on here fairly even. So here we go. And that looks pretty straight. I'm going to just lay this in place. I'm not going to glue that part down. I'm going to do my other one so I know how far to space that middle panel apart. And remember, this was three and three quarters and I just cut an inch off of each side. And it makes for an interesting layout on the front of a card. It's kind of like putting a puzzle back together. Speaking of puzzles, my husband and I did a puzzle over Christmas break. The kids worked on it a little bit with us, but I think he was more enthused about it than anybody. And I thought, oh, new hobby for him. That would be good. <laughs> okay, this is a little further than I wanted it. So you can see by using that liquid glue, I have a little bit of wiggle room with these pieces so I can get them evened out. And I think that looks really neat. Isn't that a neat look? So we can finish up the inside here. One thing I noticed about this lavender paper is there is a right side up. Our lavender needs to grow up, right? Not upside down. So I want to pay attention to that. And I'm just going to set this right in here, and that just adds for a really pretty accent on the inside of our card. Okay, let's get this and this in here. I'm going to use some dimensionals on the back of my label. And then I'm going to put a dimensional on the back of my lavender. I'm going to keep it towards the top, fairly towards the, you know, pretty close to the top there. I don't want any down here. And then I'm going to grab my mini dimensionals. And I'm just going to put one of those on the bottom of my lavender stem. Okay, I think we are ready to put this together. So, 
we're going to get placement here. I want this to be, I'd say right about here. I think that's going to work pretty good. So I'm going to put my lavender right in here. That looks good. I'm going to take that dimensional off of there and I'm going to tuck that right behind my sentiment layer. Just like that. Then we can bring this in here. Grab my take your pick tool. That just works really good for me to get these backings off of these dimensionals. And I'm going to put this right in here. Get that on there straight. I'm going to pop that dimensional off the back of my stem and my stem is just going to slide up in here. And I'm just going to let it peek out from under there. So we've got this nice big bouquet of lavender. Then I'm going to drop a butterfly right here and another one right up here. So let's put that big one on there again using my take your pick tool. I always feel like this is an extension of my hand. It's really good for picking up those tiny little things. All right, that looks really nice. Now I want a bow. So I've got this bow tie, or I call it a bow jig, and I really like it. I'm gonna use it for this linen thread. If you um, don't have a bow maker and you would like to get your hands on this, I do have them. For sale, they're ten dollars. That covers the cost and the shipping that I have to pay to have these made, and I just really love them. I've got a whole video on how to make um, bows with this, but this is a triple bow. I wrapped that around three times and tied it. It's going to give you a perfect bow every single time. And so, if you struggle tying bows, as I know most of us do, one of these tools is just really handy little glue dot right there and i kind of curled it up in a log oh my gosh how pretty is that last but not least we have these gorgeous lavender gems they are part of the suite and speaking of the suite i have a um class that's going to be happening in February and it's an online class. Anybody can take it and it includes this entire suite with some framed art pieces. It's like a three day stamping event that's all online. You're gonna find information for that right under this video in the description. So you'll see a little description then it'll say see more. Click on that and it'll open up a link to that if you'd like to check out that. Um, we're calling it the Lavender Dream Stamping Escape. Oh my gosh. There's going to be a decorated journal, a box set of cards. Um, it comes with a frame and framed art, all the videos to make all the projects. There's going to be 12 different cards and all kinds of other things with this particular stamping escape. Everything will be mailed out to you. There's two-part registration. You're going to order the suite and a couple other things that we recommend for the class. And then you will register with me and I will invoice you for that fabulous swag box. Oh, look at it. I got a dimensional hiding in there. Let's see if I can get that out of there. There we go. Okay. So this is our lavender card with the shadow stamping technique and this is what you get with my technique club you get an instruction sheet that tells you how to do the technique because you know in a few months or a year you might forget but you're going to have a collection of these each each month you place a 25 dollars order with me and you will get a card and an instruction sheet so i make the cards for you and give you this instruction sheet so after a while you're going to have a whole library of these and they're really fun to collect them to help you remember techniques that you might forget and then at the end of six months six consecutive months of being in the online technique club you get a 30 dollars product credit from me you can order whatever you want so 
If you're interested in that, there's a link right under this video that is going to take you right to the details for the Online Technique Club. This is my technique for the month of January 2024. If you would like to get in on this month, all you have to do is let me know, pop me an email, and place a minimum $25 order. This will be sent to you in the mail. This, this, pretty envelope, the whole enchilada. Thank you guys so much for joining me for the shadow stamping technique today. I hope you learned something and you'll give this a try. We've got these other colors here that we did. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel down here in the bottom corner. You don't want to miss anything else I have coming out. Plus, when you order right now, be before the end of February, we have celebration going on. For every $50 you order, you get to choose a celebration item. It is the best time of the year for stampers to be placing orders. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me today. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am always happy to help. There is a specific host code to use if you would like to take the Lavender Dreams Stamping Escape event. Or if you place an order with me, if your order is under $150, don't use this code other than the lavender class, but don't use the code if you're just placing a regular order. Stamp It Up is gonna give you some rewards and I definitely want you to have those. If your order is under $150, please use this code. That helps me out. It allows me to purchase things like door prizes and giveaways and things like that. Lots of things to check out on my blog. Go take a look at it. I have free card kits with orders now. So much stuff going on, plus celebration. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day.